what one might call pure cinematics, the assembly of, of film, and how it can be changed to create a different idea. Now we have a close up. Let me show what he sees. Let's assume he saw a woman holding a baby in her arms. Now we cut back to his reaction to what he sees. And he smiles. Now what is he as a character? He's a kindly man. He's sympathetic. Now, let's take the middle piece of film away, the woman with the child. But leave his two pieces of film as they were. Now we'll put in uh, a piece of film of a girl in a bikini. He looks, girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? The dirty old man. He's no longer the benign gentleman who loves babies. That's the difference. That's what film can do for you. In your journey as a cinema lover, you must have come across the term Hitchcockian style or Hitchcockian cinema. And I'm sure you must know that the term has been immortalized in history of cinema in memory of the style of direction by Sir Alfred Hitchcock. Sir Hitchcock was an English filmmaker who is one of the most influential figures in history of cinema. In a career spanning six decades, he directed over 50 feature films, many of which are still widely watched and studied. He was also known as the Master of Suspense. His films garnered 46 Academy Award nominations, including six wins, although he never won the award for the best director. Hitchcock believed in visual storytelling, that is communicating the story through visuals and not dialogues to the best possible extent. This style includes the use of camera movement to mimic a person's case, thereby turning viewers into voyeurs. The viewer is constantly aware of where a character's eyes are looking, what they are looking at and what emotion they are feeling while they are doing it. Typically using short reverse shot technique, like say in this scene from Rare Window. There's also framing close-up shots to create immediate intimacy to a character, establish focus on an object so that the viewer is aware of the focus points of a story without any dialogues emphasizing on them. Unlike a conventional film which will depend on dialogues to express its characters, Hitchcock uses visuals of hand movements to express what's going on in a character's mind, thus contrasting confidence with anxiety, helplessness with anger. No wonder in Hitchcock films, murders mostly happen through strangulation. Open it. Hitchcock is also known for his rivating set pieces, laden in bold graphic nature. Be the shower scene from Psycho, which inspires our channel logo and is perhaps the most famous scene in the history of scenes, the seaplane attack scene from North by Northwest or this revelation scene from Young and Innocent, a lesser known Hitchcock. Erika goes to a hotel to look for a man with twitchy eyes, the murderer. 
Haven't you seen anyone with a twitch yet? There are too many people. You must find him. Well, I can't ask him all if they twitches, can I? No. And then Hitchcock uses tracking shots capturing the entrance of the hotel. High angle shots into the hall. Dollies among several visitors inside the hall to make the viewer realize how improbable it is to locate a man with twitching eyes within the crowd. before eventually closing into the eyes of the murderer. That twitch. And friends, that's what we call visual storytelling, where the director knows exactly where to put the camera to maximize the impact of the actions on screen. All this is not to say that Hitchcock's cinema was bereft of dialogues. In fact, it was quite the opposite. However, the striking imagery and the setup to the next scene made the dialogue an integral part of the storytelling. I don't hate her. I hate what she's become. I hate the illness. Wouldn't it be better if you put her someplace You mean an institution? A madhouse? And not like talking photographs, a term Hitchcock would often use to describe cinema, which was heavily dialogue driven. It's like a lot of films one sees today. Not that I see very many, but to me, they're what I call photographs of people talking bears no relation to the art of a cinema. And that is why something like a Jurassic World made with high budget, cutting edge technology and international stars doesn't impact, as it's mostly dialogues employed to shock the audience. You watch and forget soon in absence of the cinematic essence. And why do you remember the 1993 original? because of the impact driven through visual storytelling. Hitchcock's cinema became an inspiration for numerous filmmakers for the next generation who would go on to make great Hollywood cinema. That includes Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino and M. Night Shyamalan among others. If you are not initiated with Hitchcock yet, we recommend you start with Psycho, North by Northwest, Rear Window, Shadow of a Doubt and Vertigo considered to be the best film of all time by the Sight and Sound poll in 2012. If you have watched these, you could swiftly move on to Strangers on a Train, Dial M for Murder and Rope. The mysterious world of the Master of Suspense awaits you. Mr. Hitchcock, why do you always make mystery films? Well, life is a big mystery, isn't it? It always has been. I think people are intrigued by mystery to find out about things they don't know anything about. That's a mystery. That is all for today, folks. We hope you enjoyed our new series where we introduce or reintroduce you to the legends of world cinema who have created and nurtured the language of the medium itself. If you like this, do leave a comment and a like. Also, do let us know which director should we cover next. <laughs>